The barrister and judge, Constant Briscoe, wrote a shocking memoir of her childhood detailing the dreadful physical and mental abuse meted out to her by her mother. Ugly, published in 2006, became a bestseller. But her mother was determined to prove her daughter a liar and took her to court. On the 1st of December this year, 74-year-old Carmen Briscoe Mitchell lost her case. As part of our series of end-of-year interviews, Constance Briscoe has spoken for the first time about the experience of facing her mother across the court. I thought how, if I could wave a magic wand, I would make all the unhappy children in the world happy. All my life, I had wanted someone to care for me. When happiness came knocking on my door, I'd be waiting. I'd open the door and say, where have you been? What took you so long? And if you just give me a moment, I'll pack and go with you. If you had known what would happen in the last few weeks with this libel trial, would you have written the book? Yes, definitely. Did you think at the time you wrote it that there was a chance that your mother would come after you? Yes, I thought that she would come after me. I didn't, I had not appreciated that my um, sisters and brothers might join her when she came after me. That was a bit of a surprise. I wrote a letter to my mother. I put the letter in my school embroidery bag and went into the bedroom. I removed the top from the bottle of bleach, diluted it with tap water, drank it and went back to bed. I chose Domestos because Domestos kills all known germs and my mother had for so long told me that I was a germ. The way your mother treated you, when you read the pages that you wrote, some of the things she would call you Miss Pissabed and so forth, are you so divorced from it now or does it still upset you? Well, I don't wet the bed anymore. That stopped a long time ago. I'm completely divorced from it. I think I was divorced from it by the time I was 14, really, when she left me in the house and then moved on. So what happened when uh, you faced each other in court? We ignored each other. She didn't exist as far as I was concerned and I didn't exist as far as she was concerned. So that was good. In court, several things happened. Uh, but one of the things that happened was that you were getting emails from children. What happened? Yeah. <laughs> well, I've had an enormous amount of emails from various people, including a lot of children who have read the book. They knew that the trial was coming up, and some of them sent me emails saying, look, you know, they're really advising me as to how to deal with my mother. You know, just tell her to go away, <laughs> you know, which was very helpful. I had just shown my mother my class photograph. I stood with my face still, looking at my mother, Jesus Christ, me give birth to that, she stared from the photograph to me. Lord, sweet Lord, how come she's so ugly, ugly, ugly? If I hadn't given birth to her, sweet Lord, I would have sworn she was a fraud. We have lots of young people actually who come along and they, they want to have cosmetic surgery. You know, and, um, because you had cosmetic surgery? Because I had cosmetic surgery. And what and do you say have, to them? They should have it. They should have it? Yeah, when they're old enough, they should have it, yeah. To, for what? Well, if they have a complex about themselves and it, and it is eating away at their lives or uh, preventing them moving forward, then when they're old enough, they should have it if it makes them feel better about themselves. So what were your own issues that led you to plastic surgery? Oh, issues of ugliness, which... Um, I thought could be resolved by having surgery. But you only thought you were ugly because your mother told you? Well, that, it might have been a bit of both, actually. It might have been because I was ugly and because my mother told me and because I had the money to sort it out. So, both. So, what, tell me the extent of the surgery. Everything. Well, I can tell you bits. I've had my eyes done. I've had my nose done. Bridge and bottom. What, my to mouth. narrow it? Yeah, and mouth to reduce the size, and my feet, I've had them narrowed, and I'm not done yet. Shannon, if you're out there, please come on, we love you, Tibbets, we miss you so much. When uh, 
you hear about the dreadful things that happened to uh, Shannon Matthews and you know uh, a lot about abuse. Is it likely that this level of abuse is, exists elsewhere at the moment? That we yes. are missing abuse all the time? Absolutely, yes. Absolutely, yes. I mean, had that family not been involved in the child going missing, for example, we would never have realised the extent to which what we regard as normal had sort of disappeared from the fabric of that family. We only discovered it because the child was missing. Apart from that, um, they would have continued perfectly normally. So I think it's um, a tragic day when we in our civilised society need to wake up and see what other provisions we need to put in place. Do you find that chilling? It is quite extraordinary because this is a mother. She is female and we in society do not normally as associate that kind of abuse where it is the female who is leading the charge and she really is a lead character. This is a very cunning and devious woman who has set an agenda with her child uh, as bait and is carrying it out. And in a civilised society, we simply have yet to get to grips with the fact that mothers, mothers can be as predatory as men. So how do we create a society where our respect for children is much greater? I'm not quite sure about that. I don't think that we will ever achieve that. Not really. I don't think so. There's another baby P case coming along. I'm quite, I'm quite sure. Then there'll be another one, and another. Um, we're only concerned at the moment in relation to baby P because it, it was so terrible. But six months time, we'll forget about baby P. Then we'll have another baby, baby Q maybe. And then we'll think, shock horror. Oh, goodness me, this shouldn't happen again. Then it will. And then the government of the day will say we're going to put all of these provisions in place. It's just nonsense. My brother's birthday was the 31st of January and my mother bought him a toy plane which was remote controlled. As I entered the room, my mother turned the plane and deliberately flew it in my direction. My mother lowered it as it approached me. Again, it sliced through my left cheek. Blood poured through the wound. My brother laughed. Get out, my mother said. You are not welcomed in here. You were abused mm -hmm. and survived mm -hmm. and you have changed. Mm -hmm. But are you now somebody who is in some way closed up? Do you allow your, would you ever allow yourself to be hurt again, for example? By who? By anybody. I mean, uh, it depends who it is. I might like it. It depends on who it is. Hurt by my children, yes, that's fine. Hurt by parent, well, no, that's history. Um, who else is there that's in a position to hurt me? No one. But have who you made it? yourself into a kind of fortress, do you think? No. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Although it would be rather nice to be a fortress. I don't think so. No. I was only hurt by one person. It was my mother. Just one. Nobody else. Carlson's Brisker, thank you very much. That's a pleasure. Carlson's Brisker, tomorrow.